subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 10th of September. Viral fever overwhelms rural healthcare system in India. UN says Afghan staff increasingly harassed, intimidated since Taliban takeover. and covid-19 subdues ganesh chaturthi celebrations in india and now for all the details amid the covid-19 pandemic the outbreak of dengue and viral fever in several indian states has posed a serious challenge to the authorities as many children are getting admitted to hospitals leading to a possible scarcity of beds in children's wards With rising viral fever cases among children in Darbhanga city of India's eastern Bihar state, the hospital's pediatric ward remains overwhelmed and there are 2 to 3 children to a bed undergoing treatment. There are more than 150 patients admitted in the district hospital every day out of which 15 are serious. Abhi to sthiti ye ki hamare sare bed full hain aur hum logon ne atrikt bed ke liye jo naya ward banaya hai pipu ka उसको कल से चालू करने का निर्णय ले लिया है तो कल से वो वार्ड भी मेरा चालू हो जाएगा अभी तक हम हर एक मरीज को बेड प्रोवाइड कर पा रहे हैं और और मरीजों की संख्या बढ़ेगी तो हमने बेड की संख्या बढ़ा ली है वायरल फीवर इज यूजुअली अ सीजनल फीवर इन इंडिया दैट लास्ट फॉर 2 टू 3 डेज टिपिकली इन सीरियस केसेस इट कैन एक्सटेंड अप टू 14 डेज हाउएवर डेथ्स ड्यू टू वायरल फीवर आर वेरी रेयर यहां का समस्या तो इतना बुरा हाल है के मरीज मतलब है कि बेड है अगर 100 तो मरीज है 1000 हजार यहाँ का कोई व्यवस्था सही नहीं है एक एक बेड के अंदर पे दो दो तीन तीन मरीज है अर्लियर दिस वीक हॉस्पिटल इन इंडिया मोस्ट पॉपुलर उत्तर प्रदेश स्टेट विच इज रीलिंग अंडर एन आउटब्रेक ऑफ डेंगी एंड वायरल फीवर वर्स फॉर्म विद पेशेंट अमिट सर्जिंग केसेज The dengue fever gripped several districts of the state with the death toll crossing 100 last week. Hospitals in most of the districts have set up dedicated special isolation wards for dengue and viral fever patients to accommodate the rising number of patients. The state is also conducting a door-to-door -door survey and fumigation drives to fight the tropical disease. Most patients survive dengue but it is estimated to kill about 20000 every year many of them children who are not able to fight against it Australia's foreign minister Marai Spain and defense minister Peter Dutton arrived in New Delhi on Friday for the 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue between India and Australia The Australian ministers will hold a 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue with India's foreign minister S Jay Shankar and defense minister Rajnath Singh in New Delhi on Saturday They will discuss issues including economic security cyber climate critical technology and supply chains Post arrival the Australian defense minister was accorded guard of honor Rajnath Singh and his Australian counterpart later held delegation level talks in Delhi Singh conveyed that India and Australia have shared stakes in a peaceful cooperative and prosperous Indo-Pacific region The visit is aimed at advancing Australia's relationship with their close friends and strategic partners in the Indo-Pacific region Australia's foreign ministry in a statement this week said that the ministers will be visiting India, Indonesia, South Korea and the United States. Moving on. Afghan nationals living in India held a protest in New Delhi on Friday against the Taliban and Pakistan. They called Pakistan a terrorist country over reports that it helped Taliban in its offensives in Panjshir. a last holdout province in Afghanistan though the resistance forces have not yet conceded defeat Afghan nationals living in India on Friday carried out a protest in New Delhi against the Taliban and Pakistan's military offensive in Afghanistan the protesters including women and children carried placards which read Pakistan is a terrorist country 
and Afghanistan is injured as they express support to the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan led by Ahmed Massoud. They raised concerns over reports of Pakistan's role in helping Taliban to capture Panjshir, a last holdout province in Afghanistan, though the resistance has not conceded defeat. So our protest is why we have to go to Pakistan. Who is it? 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 इससे हमारा प्रोटेस्ट आज इसी के लिए जमा हम सब हुए हैं क्योंकि हमें मतलब ये जुल्म नहीं चाहिए क्यों जुल्म हो रहा है हमारे ऊपर सारी कंट्री क्यों साइलेंट बैठे हैं इंडियाज फॉरेन मिनिस्टर एस जयशंकर अर्लियर दिस वीक ड्यूरिंग अफगानिस्तान कॉन्फ्रेंस को कन्वीन बाय द यूएस एंड जर्मनी सेड द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी शुड नॉट सपोर्ट एक्सटर्नल प्लेयर्स हु आर अबेटिंग वायलेंस इन अफगानिस्तान इन क्लियर इंडिकेशन टुवर्ड्स पाकिस्तान Pakistan spy agency ISI's chief lieutenant general Faiz Hamid flew into Kabul last weekend but it was not clear what his agenda was Washington has accused Pakistan and the ISI of backing the Taliban in its two decade war against US backed government in Kabul although Islamabad has denied the charges Since the Taliban came to power in Afghanistan last month, Afghan staff of the United Nations are being increasingly subjected to harassment and intimidation. UN Special Envoy on Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, has told the Security Council. Though Taliban have vowed to allow the media to operate, two Afghan journalists were beaten in police custody this week after covering a protest by women in Kabul where they were detained by the Taliban. The UN Special Envoy on Afghanistan, Deborah Lyons, said on Thursday that Afghan staff of the United Nations are being increasingly subjected to harassment and intimidation since the Taliban came to power last month. Lyons told the Security Council that UN premises had largely been respected, although there were some exceptions. While the Islamist militants have sought to reassure Afghans and Western powers that they will respect people's rights, reports of reprisals have undermined confidence we are however increasingly worried by the growing number of incidents of harassment and intimidation against our national staff we will continue to do everything possible to support our staff and keep them from harm's way the un cannot conduct its work work that is so essential to the afghan people if its personnel are subjected to intimidation fear for their lives and cannot move freely senior us diplomat jeffrey de laurentis called on the taliban to respect the independence and neutrality of the un on thursday journalist taki daryabi and neemat nagdi from etilat rose newspaper said that they were tortured by the taliban after covering protest on afghanistan's panjshir valley in kabul Both had severe bruises on their bodies from the beatings during their detention. Ma khatir e koshish tazawur rafta bolin tazawurat ki zana bar bizar karda bud. Ada unja ni hay tani bar ni dar hawza se. Ma va hamkarim ra ba khud burdan dar hawza va aridish kanja qar. The Taliban who swept into the capital Kabul on August 15 and now rule Afghanistan again after fighting a 20 year insurgency against foreign and afghan forces have vowed to allow the media to operate and respect people's human rights but incidents of abuse since they came to power have raised doubts among some afghans in news from pakistan Foreign ministers of Pakistan and Qatar held a bilateral meeting in Islamabad on Thursday and called on the international community not to make humanitarian aid to Afghanistan conditional on political developments under the new Taliban government. Pakistan and Qatar are considered the two countries with the most influence over the Taliban. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Thursday held bilateral talks with his Qatari counterpart Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani in Islamabad and both the leaders later called on the international community for unconditional humanitarian aid to Afghanistan despite political developments under the new Taliban government addressing a joint news conference Qureshi also called on for the unfreezing of Afghanistan's foreign assets Pakistan and Qatar are considered the two countries with the most influence over the Taliban 
Pakistan has long been considered a country where many senior Taliban leaders escaped to after the US led invasion of Afghanistan in 2001. In 2013, the Taliban opened its political office in Doha, where most of its senior leadership has since been based. But what we are saying is, okay, if you're not ready for immediate uh, uh, economic aid or development, fine. But do not take steps that would, uh, 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 you know, lead to an economic collapse of Afghanistan. That will not help. Sheikh Mohammed, who is also Qatar's deputy prime minister, also called on Pakistan's prime minister Imran Khan and discussed bilateral ties and the evolving Afghanistan situation. According to reports, Pakistan's foreign minister Shaukat Tareen has said that the country will conduct bilateral trade with Taliban in Pakistani rupees as Kabul is facing a shortage of dollars. Experts, however, say through this move, Pakistan's currency will have a hold over Afghan traders and the business community amid an economic downturn. In news from Nepal, hundreds of Hindu women in Nepal gathered to celebrate the Tej festival outside the Pashupatinath temple in Kathmandu on Thursday despite surging COVID-19 cases. They prayed for marital bliss and the well-being of their families and also sang traditional songs to mark the occasion. Hundreds of Hindu women gathered outside the famous Pashupatinath temple in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Thursday to celebrate Tej, one of the most popular Hindu festivals despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Hindu women pray for marital bliss and fast for the well-being of their spouses and children during the three-day festival, which commemorates the union of the goddess Parvati and Lord Shiva. Women and young girls in Kathmandu who were dressed up in red traditional attire on the last day of the festival performed rituals and prayers outside the temple which usually hosts thousands of devotees during normal times but remained closed on the occasion due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Tej being uh, one of the most celebrated festivals in uh, Nepal with all these women clad in their red attire, it feels really uh, sad actually that the temple is closed and women do not get a chance to uh, to worship, uh, worship their god like they had planned. But still we see a lot of crowd here today, uh, a, little, a little more than uh, last year. The annual festival celebrates womanhood as well as giving a chance to women to visit their parents' home, kin and friends and eat various delicacies and express their pain and sorrow through songs. Nepal has reported over 774,580 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 10,903 deaths so far. Hindu devotees across India on Friday began celebrations of 10-day long Ganesh Chaturthi festival which commemorates the birth of the Hindu elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha. However, the festivities were subdued due to restrictions on large public gatherings due to COVID-19. Scores of Hindu devotees across India on Friday began celebrations of Ganesh Chaturthi festival which commemorates the birth of the Hindu elephant-headed god Lord Ganesha with less pomp due to COVID-19 restrictions. Like last year, the pandemic yet again put a halt to a large-scale festivities in many parts of the country, including in Maharashtra, where the 10-day-long Ganesh Chaturthi is marked in an extravagant manner. Most of the river temples in the western state restricted the entry of devotees and processions were not allowed by the government in view of the pandemic. In Nagpur city, devotees gathered and prayed outside a closed temple to pay obeisance to Lord Ganesha, the deity of prosperity, while only priests conducted prayers inside. In eastern Odisha state, to mark the occasion, an environmental protection group dressed a tree as Lord Ganesha to integrate culture with environment to bring awareness to environmental issues and deforestation. 
Meanwhile, an artist in Eastern Buri city crafted a Ganesha idol using over 5,600 matchsticks and a businessman in northern Ludhiana city made an idol with dark chocolate to be later distributed among people. Lord Ganesha is considered the embodiment of wisdom and is widely revered as the remover of obstacles. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.